Hey guys, Tammy here. And today we're going to talk about, are you living in the past? Are you living in the past? Because a lot of times we've come out of these toxic, abusive, narcissistic relationships and, you know, we're finally out. We're finally on the other side, but we're living like we're still in them. I can remember a lot of times Thomas would say to people, well, you need to get a divorce. And they'd be like, well, I am getting a divorce. That's why I hired you to be my attorney because I'm getting a divorce. And he would be like, no, but emotionally you're not. You're going through all the steps of getting a divorce, but you're not emotionally divorcing or breaking up with that person. It's two different tracks, right? You've got your process and your legal track, and you've got the emotional component of actually separating from that person, which is usually the more difficult task, especially if you're coming out of a high conflict or narcissistic relationship. So before we dive into this topic, let me just remind you, if you like this content, don't forget to hit like on the video. Also subscribe to the channel so that you get notified as new videos are released. If you haven't checked out the podcast, go do that. Also, please share on social media any of these videos that you have found helpful to you that may be helpful to somebody else going through this, okay? What happens in these situations is that we have baggage, right? Let's face it. You've been in this toxic relationship, narcissistic relationship, whatever kind of issue it was. Sometimes they're even more abusive than that, right? Sometimes they're physically abusive. Um, obviously, the emotional abuse comes in with a narcissistic person, but some people are also dealing with, with physical abuse in these situations. And so all of that has emotional baggage that you then carry forward into your new relationship. And what we tend to do is we tend to make, continue to make our decisions based on that perspective, or we'll gather information and we'll make our decision based on what that other parent is doing. And many times I have clients say, well, I'm afraid he or she is going to do this. I'm afraid he or she is going to do that. And what I always tell them is, look, we're not making decisions based on that other person. Okay. That is that is like being trapped in your old life. When you're making decisions out of fear of whatever they are or aren't going to do, you're still living in your old life. Aren't those the same eggshells that you've been walking around on for the last however many years that you've been dealing with this person? Yeah, they are. And so now you're out. Why, why are you still making decisions based on that? Why? Because you're almost programmed, right? You're, you're programmed to, it's, it's, you've been conditioned really in a certain way, right? To behave in that way. And part of that for most people is usually poor boundaries, right? Not knowing how to, to disengage from that person, not knowing how to have a clear boundary, not knowing how to um, keep that person from crossing those boundaries, you know, how to stand up for themselves in appropriate ways without kind of being like, you're going to listen to me, dang it. You know, that's not what I mean by standing up for yourself. What happens is because we've been conditioned in that way, we continue to have that same reaction, even if it isn't serving us in anymore. Even if we really want out of the relationship, we're still engaging with our co-parent the same way that we did when they were our partner. Okay. And then we're wondering why we don't feel any better, why we can't get any peace, why, <laughs> why our lives aren't improving despite being away from this person. It's because a lot of times, at least in, especially, I will say, especially in the beginning, but sometimes for years, we are continue, we are continuing to engage in the same manner that we did previously. And I will tell you that for me, I actually, uh, it took me about eight years. I, I talk about this. Um, it took me about eight years to learn how to actually disengage 
from my ex and to stop being on that emotional merry-go-round with him. And honestly, the triggering event for me that finally allowed me to break free was I lost my mother. My mother passed away suddenly and that shifted a lot of things in my brain. And I suddenly got to the point where I could draw that line, but it took (laughs) that level for something to shift in my brain. And so that's really something that I try to work with my coaching clients on is how do we make that shift in your brain now (laughs) to enable you to move forward and to create peace in your life that doesn't require some level of traumatic event equivalent to your mother passing away, right? Like, I I hope it doesn't take that for you. Um, That's part of why I do what I do, because I want to help people learn how to move through this and process it effectively, you know, in in a way that I didn't, in a way that I wasn't given the tools to do. I wish I had had me, but I didn't. I look back at my initial, um, Uh, relationship with Thomas, um, my late husband that passed away. I've been talking about him a lot lately. When he and I first got together, you know, I had come out of a relationship with my narcissistic ex-husband who had had multiple affairs. He had had three affairs um, before our relationship actually ended, before I finally got fed up enough where I pulled the trigger and, and walked. But I carried that into my, um, relationship with Thomas, if he didn't answer his phone or he didn't respond fast enough or he looked cross-eyed at another woman, you know, or whatever, I would be very reactive to that because I was still moving through my world and making decisions based on what my ex-husband had done. I didn't, I didn't have a lot of time. My ex-husband moved down. I met Thomas about six months later. So it wasn't, I didn't take a huge amount of time for healing, probably not as much as I really needed, but I had been in therapy for a couple of years by that point. And so I had processed a lot of things, but that trust had not really come back for me in that way. And so that's something that Thomas and I had to work through. He was very patient with me and he did a lot of things to help build that trust um, between us. Um, and to help me kind of recover from that. And I, I did my own work, obviously, in it too, um, to do my part. But I was still making decisions based on what had happened. And when you're looking at your custody, a lot of times you're making decisions out of what you fear that parent will or won't do. Like a lot of times I have clients who are almost afraid to discipline their children. It's like, well, what if I discipline the children? What if the other parent's talking bad about me or the other parent says A or B or, you know, then that influences the child. And I'm like, well, you, you can't be afraid to parent. I mean, if you're afraid to parent, you know, if they're not teenagers now, when they are teenagers, you're going to lose all control. And if they are teenagers, you're going to lose all control because kids smell fear like animals do, right? So they're going to know. Or it'll be like, oh, I don't want to take the children to see my parents because then, you know, my ex will find out that we went to see my parents and then they'll start talking bad to the children about my parents, whatever. It's, it's little things like that, that people will start to close in their life. It it will cause you to not live in the way that you truly want to live because you're always worried about that repercussion. But again, you've got to step into your new life. You've got to start to draw those boundaries and not live in that fear. Because if that narcissist can keep you living in that fear, they continue to control you. And then you might as well have stayed. You might as well have not gotten a divorce or whatever. You might as well have stayed in the toxic relationship and tolerated everything because you're still giving them the ability to control you through all of these fears that they create. And honestly, I will tell you, 99% of the time, I would say, it's a bluff. I find that you, if you actually do things that sort of call their bluff when they say or do something, most of the time, they won't follow through. Most Because narcissists are used to kind of living on their charisma and their words and they talk their way through things. And when you actually like draw that boundary and they have to actually 
follow through on what they said they were going to do or what they threatened or whatever, it doesn't usually happen. We live in all this fear unnecessarily. And one of my favorite things when I'm working with clients is when that starts to happen and that shift actually starts to take place after they get enough courage to kind of, okay, I'm going to make this one decision and do what I want to do. And then, oh, look, they actually back down or nothing did happen or nothing. And then they make another one. Oh, look. And you gain more confidence each time that you're able to do that. And as you move through it, you get stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger. And then you start to kind of realize they're full of crap. Like all they do is walk around threatening and bullying and all this stuff. And they never actually do anything anyway. And you were living inside of this little box. It's sort of like how they tie the the rope around a young elephant's leg, you know, and then by the time they're older, they can tie a rope around their leg and they won't go anywhere because they don't think they can because they couldn't when they were little. It's the same theory. You've been in this little box. This person has convinced you that you can't leave it. And so you stay there. And when you actually step outside that box and you figure out that they can't do anything or they don't do anything, they don't follow through on their end, then you start to gain emotional strength. But stepping outside that box is scary because we're always worried that they're actually going to do what they're threatening to do. So my challenge for you in this video is to step outside the box, do something the way that you want to do it and not because of what you think their reaction is going to be. I guarantee you, you will gain strength from trying that. If you'd like to learn more about how I can support you on this journey and help you continue to gain that emotional strength and empowerment in your child custody situation, you can go to divorceuniversityonline.com forward slash VIP dash coaching. There is a link on that page where you can book a time to speak to a member of my staff, learn more about my services and how I can help you find your power again. Okay. Talk to you guys soon.